Hello, welcome to Trekkie and Beyond, a Star Trek podcast. I'm Anika. And I'm Andrea. And welcome to another character deep dive. And in this one, we're doing a little special character deep dive. Because instead of just talking about the character as a whole, we're going to talk about her hair journey. And I'm talking about Michael Burnham's hair. Because this girl has had a lot of different looks in four seasons. But as you guys know, for our little deep dives, we tend to have, like our season finales, our season reviews, we like to have a guest host to talk to us, with us, about how they feel about this certain topic. So today's guest host is someone you guys have heard from before. And so welcome back, Janae. I'm like excited to be back to have this conversation. I think it's going to be really fun. An amazing conversation because we are all Black women and we're all going to discuss the different journey of our hair. Michael's hair has evolved a lot over time. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to talk about it because our hair evolves, our situations evolve, including how much we want to manage our hair, if we want a protective hairstyle, if we want, if we are on a specific occupation in which there needs to be more structured for the hair. Um, and then also as kids, when you're not really, don't have a really a choice of how your, <laughs> how your hair will look at that point in time. And this was really before her adoption, in which her, her hair was much more free as uh, Michael was a preteen. Um, any thoughts about this and how when you're a preteen, come of age, your hairstyle, much more flowy? So actually, it's really interesting. Um, so for this, when you didn't really have control over your hair, right. in the sense of the age, of like your hair was still your parents' decision on what to do. Because um, I know yes. from my um, experience, even though I always wore my hair straight, like my entire life, even when I was natural for years, um, I, I had a flat iron and I had a hot comb and then you hold your hair down. Um, it was because that was the way my mother wanted my hair done because I had a lot of hair. <laughs> And so this reminded me of, she was still with her parents um, and her mom was natural as we saw. So her mom was like, you're natural as well. And we saw, we get to see that healthy, beautiful, um, curly black hair that we hadn't seen so far with um, with the adult um, Michael in the other episodes. So it was to see almost like the youth and the innocence. And you know, when you're a child, you let your hair be a little bit more out because like you don't really understand what it takes to do it. The parents do. So it was um, a lot more freeing and innocent when I saw her like this. Um, So <laughs> we talk about representation when it comes to hair texture. First of all, love to see it, right? Because that's something that I think is important just to see women, Black women or women of color wearing their hair in its natural texture, the way it grows out of their scalp, right? Um, As opposed to having to style it in a way that's considered to be what they call mainstream. Yeah. Um, so it was cool they didn't force her to, to straighten her hair, especially being a child. Um, I, mean, I thought it was cool to be 100 years or 200 years in the future and mm -hmm. natural hair is still is more celebrated, more accepted, and all that kind of stuff. Um, on the flip side, though, mm -hmm. texture and, and this concept of texture discrimination would have been different if they had a young girl whose texture was slightly different than the texture of this young girl's hair. I don't want to get into hair typing, but my hair texture is not what, when I was younger, the type of hair that you wore natural, if that made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so my mom flat on our hair. I mean, she uh, pressed our hair with a hot comb too. So we, if we weren't in braids and beads, we were hot comb straight. Uh, and then when I tried to wear my hair natural, my texture wasn't the type of texture that people typically wear natural at the time. <laughs> and I didn't see much representation of that online. I mean, on TV, unless, of course, it was like just a general afro. Um, so, I mean, there's just that thought. I mean, I don't know if they were thinking about that when they cast the young girl. I'm pretty sure they were picking somebody who actually fit the role. I mean, who did a good job playing the character. But just as a thought, I, I recognize that even when I see young Black girls with natural hair on TV, they still have a certain texture that they tend to uh, portray. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I chose this photo, because you can see the curl pattern and it's a much looser curl pattern mm -hmm. um it's actually a curl pattern that's similar to the actress that plays michael's mother so G gabrielle burham's character her hair is um of this same texture so it's interesting but not the same texture as Nico martin greens and i'm like you if you see my natural hair it's the afro kind i have the horsey <laughs> hair <laughs> and if i was looking tender headed y'all to be getting it every day yeah, when my hair was natural, it was up. It did not lay like that. Even when wet, it was 
Right. I Afro. tried that once and I came back look like Frederick Douglass. I said, this is not for me. <laughs> but maybe because her parents are both a scientist and an engineer, she had, and there's a replicator at their home, she was able to produce the best product, the best a custard um, and lock method possible to keep this lush look. <laughs> <laughs> you wish for thank you. Yeah, that, that's a really good description. <laughs> Compared to the next look, and this is which Michael's reflecting back into her uh, adoption into the Vulcan household. And at that time, she had more of a straight and a bowl cut. What did the two of you think about that? So no. that style reminded me of how I said in the very beginning, your parents did your hair. Mm -hmm. And that and we she went from one type of parent who knew how to do her hair. And so if this look came back to the look I had as a child, not to say my mom didn't know how to do my hair, but it's a lot to do our hair every single day. So mm -hmm. she kept it straight, kept it flat ironed, kept it in ponytails. And as you can see today, it's like that right now because I just could not deal with it. Um, that's the look of, I want you to look presentable, but I don't know how to do your hair. And so I'm going to make you fit in like everyone else. And instead of ex ex instead of showcasing her curls, we're going to straighten it because I can handle it this way and it doesn't stand out. Those so are my in thoughts. this case, I think the actress is definitely wearing a wig. A wig, yes. yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously for the show, she's definitely wearing a wig. But I mean, in the show, like if I were to, if it's real life, right? This is her real life in the show. I mean, I guess in theory, they probably straighten her hair, you know, like the Vulcan, whatever, would have done something. They got modern technology. It's the year 2236. I'm pretty sure they had something that they could use to quickly say, hey, beer straight, beer cut, whatever. But is it flattering? No, it's not. I don't know. But even when the Vulcans do it, some of them, it looks dope and some of them, it, it just doesn't. But <laughs> And this one, clearly, she's trying to assimilate into the Vulcan culture, whether it's her personal choice or whether or not the Vulcan parents, you know, recommended that she did it. It did, wasn't one of the parents a uh, human? Yeah, Amanda, her adopted mother, human. So, I mean, they're not ignorant of, like, black like hair. I mean, they are, but they're not. You know what I mean? And I mean ignorant as in, like, they know it exists, that it's different. But they may not know how to style it, which is, it is what it is. There are some black, black people don't know how to style black hair, but... I think they were just trying to like make her feel Vulcan or maybe she was trying to feel Vulcan. So appearance was one of those ways that she could do that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's a no for me. Uh, sorry. So she, I yeah. agree with you, Jay, Janae. I think they make her assimilate into Vulcan society and Vulcan schools because uh, she doesn't look like everyone else and her upbringing is different. So a human um, in Vulcan culture. I mean, she was also denied entry into the sci Vulcan Science Academy because mm -hmm. she, the fact that she's human, right? So um, I think that they were trying to help her, I think, be more like Spock mm -hmm. <laughs> and look like everyone else in the class. I mean, if they really wanted her to blend in, they would have hid her ear. They would have hid her ears because it was her ears mm -hmm. that sort of gave her away. If you if she, if you covered her ears, this photo showcases the top of her ears. If they had just left that a little long and covered the top of her ears, they wouldn't have known she was human. Not until like she like you know plucked her 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 hair behind her ear trying to look cute for a guy and never she had a crush. But otherwise, mm -hmm. <laughs> they would have never known and she would have fit right in. <laughs> I'm also thinking that this maintaining this type of style would be a lot of work to go mm -hmm. from that curlier texture to either getting if she wasn't wearing a wig to get it either permed, flat ironed, straightened in some sort of way every four to six weeks would have been a lot for a 12 year old. It's 20, it's 22, 36 though. Still. Maybe technology has evolved so much that they found it <laughs> mean, more practical and, and safer. Right. And, uh, you know, a way of doing relaxers that last longer. I mean, I didn't get my first relaxer until I was in eighth grade. And even then, it would only take me an hour and a half in the stylist chair. Like she would wash it, blow dry it. Like she would use a blow dry attachment that had that little iron on that iron on it. That had a little comb on it and like straighten it as she dried it. And then just did the uh, hot comb through it. And I was done. And so I feel like for this, I'm saying to say like, it is possible to keep this style if they know how to wrap it at night. At least some people know how to wrap their hair. I feel like that's a very basic 
task to learn to do her hair. It's just a wrap. You think you you would think. <laughs> okay, I'm just I just think the little the bump in the front and the the way the sides are. I think that's harder to wrap. In any case, it's more than maybe Spock would have to do every night before Correct. going to bed. So it's a little less yeah. studying if she had to manipulate this because it's not the way her hair naturally grows. She put a do rag on not every day. Easy and protective flat. style. <laughs> Yeah, she put a like a do rag or something. They are some not kind even do rags this far in the future. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, something of the likes, right? And then whatever she did to wrap it, because I think a wrapping it would be better than a bonnet. I mean, like wrap it like a scarf or something, because it looks like you want to keep that flat. Right? Yeah. So you would probably put like a scarf or something that would keep it laid flat, and then you know maybe it'll last a little bit longer for. Her. I mean, hey, when I wrap my hair, it comes down. Like if I was, if I had always flat ironed my hair. Like for years, for years, I wore it flat ironed. It it will do that. And in the morning, you just bump the end. I used to do that. When but I see, had- like with... Um, Very doable. But that's straight flat. Like it's like her bump, like you had to bump it to get the curl at the end. It's so when I used to wrap my hair, it would, I mean, you would get the bend. So it would look like it had more body. But that is flat. Like her hair doesn't look like it has much of a. I feel like the bump in the front, her bang, is really just her forehead. Like it looks that way because of her forehead. (laughs) So it's like they took a scarf, wrapped it up at night to keep it as flat and straight as 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 possible. No life to it. No no body. No no bump for real. Just it doesn't stand out. So Janae, you mentioned do rag and wrapping with a scarf, and I just want to mention that in Strange New Worlds, there is a scene where Yohora was waking up, and she had uh, a hair wrap on, and I thought of the level of authenticity in that scene. See, as we see, that's something I that's believe never a style. hair wrap. I believe a hair wrap exists. I just. <laughs> Yeah, we're just talking if about hair wrap is if I see a do rag, some things for the black culture would never go out of style. A hair bonnet, out of a style, but a like a do rag and a stocking cap. I can believe a stocking cap. I just don't know why I can't believe a do rag on a spaceship. I just don't know why my brain just can't fathom. What do you think the black man gonna do? Because they still want those waves. That's that's a good thought. But like, I just can't think of someone running from like their room to the like bridge. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they have the best creams and like <laughs> and gels. Okay, let's fast forward to as Michael Lee's um, Vulcan culture to go off to the Federation to join Starfleet. And Amanda gives her Alice in Wonderland book. And this is in season two, episode 11, Perpetual Infinity. So, and then it continued further when she joined this, the Shenju in the first episode of the series called Vulcan Hello. So I kind of like this one better than how it was when she was a child. I don't really know what if they cut it differently or something. I mean, obviously, I know it's a different wig, but this looks like a cut I would see today, maybe with a little bit of modification, but it just looked a little bit more like... Like an asymmetric, like, yeah, I could see this Yeah. I think it's because it doesn't have the patch of hair right in front of her ears so that then her ears pop out more. Her hair is tucked behind her ear, which is more of much more of a casual look. I that's that sharp line that's there when she was a preteen was very bold. Like, even though this is a bit much better look than when she was a child. And I, let's be honest, all of our hair now is so much better than what we were. <laughs> I just, this one reminds me too much of Sarah. Like seeing them side by side, it's like she has the girl version. It's really interesting because her uh, her adoptive mother was human. And we can we notice that her adoptive mother never adopts the Vulcan hairstyles. Mm-hmm. And she had an option of not doing that as well. I mean, get it as a child, you sort of do what you have to do to go along to get along. We see that her her adoptive mother never adopted the Vulcan style. So she could have grew her hair back out and this was still her trying to assimilate to like Vulcan culture and not really express herself. But does um, that play into her privilege as a as an adult? Her coming in as a child wanting to be accepted by the Vulcan culture may have motivated her to want to look the part, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe Amanda didn't feel the need to look. I don't know. I mean, on one hand, I would think she probably did initially to gain that kind of acceptance. But at the same time, between depending on the, I guess, understanding that she and her husband had, 
she probably didn't ever feel like she had to, right? She just kind of like did whatever it is that she felt was best at the time, which it obviously worked out. But her being an adult assimilating into culture is very different than a child mm-hmm. trying to assimilate. So maybe there was a level of, I would call it privilege, a level of privilege as an adult where you, I mean, you're kind of, when you're an adult, you're, you're, you are who you are. You know who you are for the most part. Um, and, you know, her having a husband too, like that matters because she has some level of, she has a connection to okay, the culture. Okay, you're talking about Amanda having the yeah. privilege to do that. Okay, sorry. I thought you were talking yeah. about Michael having the privilege. No, because I'm thinking about like, because it started with her as a child and she grew into it. But I mean, I'm pretty sure that has some kind of impact on her self, like identity when it came to her adjusting into this culture that what she wasn't born into as where Amanda was also not born into it, but she was a dog when she joined. So it makes a difference as far as her self-acceptance, her... Um, how she sees herself and all of that kind of stuff, which I think is just different with the hairstyle thing. Cause I did notice that her hair, she, she was still, I was about to say she was still American. She was still human. <laughs> Let's be honest. She American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you come into this showcases as well. And also what, what brings you in here? Because Michael was brought into their family after great trouble mm-hmm. and Amanda came cause she was in love. Choice. Yeah. The choice of why you did it. And um... Michael was brought in to help nurture Spock's human side. Did she know that when she got there? No, she didn't find that out until season two when she was trying to save Spock. And then they had a family trip down memory lane (laughs) and had to work out those issues um, as the adopted child of an ambassador she was really there for like cultural immersion really to help amanda who's human be able to connect with someone else there on vulcan Mm -hmm. um and then also help spock to understand uh, and make a bridge between him and his mother i also have to say this hairstyle for me reflects michael's lack of a personality i just agreed um this hair seems edgy, but it's boring. It's so boring. <laughs> for it, because it, it has just enough asymmetrical cuts and look to seem edgy, but it's not. It's a very boring look on a very boring woman at this time. Because when she does join Starfleet at, at the age that she does, because she doesn't get into the science academy, she's boring as crap. I've seen Vulcans have more personality than she has. And she, but it's like she was trying so hard to assimilate that she erased everything. So this hairstyle was, I'm definitely going along. Like my family did, I, I could have changed if I wanted to. And my fan, and I was just like, no, I'm doubling down on this haircut, this hairstyle. I'm doubling down on it all. <laughs> Once again, to see her in relationship to other members of Starfleet, whether it's Giorgio or Tilly, there's much more freedom in their hairstyles, in their facial expressions, in their mannerisms, then Michael was very stiff at that point, very rigid, very structured. So the hairstyle definitely reflects her personality. That hairstyle needed help. That hairstyle was screaming for help. I'm so sorry. (laughs) That hairstyle said, uh, even though it was supposed to be like, I'm blending into the head, it was more of a scream for help. Please help this, honey. So fast forward a few years on the Shenzhou. Um, in season one, episode two, Battle of the Binary Stars, uh, she stepped away from that Vulcan cut just a little bit and has a little bit more bend to her hair. She has a little bit more curl. I actually like this cut. It looked like an actual, uh, maybe I'm a little biased because it looked like an actual air hairstyle that people would wear today. <laughs> um, but it looked, it didn't look like a wig for one. And it, it looked, like it had a little bit of personality while still kind of connecting to the, you know, the the Vulcan shortcut that she was rocking before. But it 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 did give her a little bit more personality. And I feel like it maybe have reflected who she was at the time because I think there was a bit more to her. Um and then with this hairstyle, one, it takes me back to I had a version of this cut in college. It was a cut for a younger head, so it looked a little bit cuter, but <laughs> it was a cut that was that said, I'm professional but cute. I can do my job and look good doing it as well because it's still a short cut, but it's not blunt. 
it's tapered down. You can see in the back of her head is tapered down versus just being that blunt line all the mm -hmm. way around. She took the time to put, cause that's not, no, that's not no natural curl. That is, I put a little, I put a bump in a flat iron or mm -hmm. I a curling iron or I, and I roll that ish with a little roller at night. Like that was that hairstyle. So it was like, she is now not trying to fully stand out because you know, you're still in uniform. You can't be, you're, you can't be too crazy looking um, in uniform, but she's also saying I'm putting effort in the way that I look. And we haven't seen her put effort in the other looks that she had. Like, this is like, I have a little bit of lipstick on. It's like, it's, I'm framing my face with this cut a bit more. It was like someone in the chair told her, honey, let me help you out. <laughs> Quite, I mean, because I, I know what picture you're going to show next. And so maybe I should save my question for that. But okay. I'll, <laughs> okay, no, I didn't know that. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, so basically there was more, um, flow more airiness to her hair than in the Vulcan cut, which was so structured. There was <laughs> so now, like we could see her as she struggles in different motions. She gets her hair actually moves. I feel like before when she was in that very structured Vulcan cut, there was a lot of hairspray, a lot of yeah. moves keeping that down. So not a one single strand stuck up at any point in time. <laughs> she wore a do rag at night to keep it flat. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So prior to, right. And when she decided to kind of leave the Vulcan cut, she went to another straightened style. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the time we also feel that she was working, she was working toward promoting, right. She wanted to become captain eventually um, rising up the career ladder. Why is it that after that dream went out the window, she went back to her natural hairstyle. So after the battle of the binary stars, she was charged with mutiny. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, she probably had less access to replicators <laughs> and other places to get um, her favorite hair custard or her favorite uh, way of nurturing her hair. And it, to me, I was getting the feeling that she went through a big chop and that she then went natural um, as the resources were limited. She was just in a different journey at that point. Also trying to find more about herself. I agree with Monique on that one. I definitely, I viewed it as you're in jail. And <laughs> for, for her crime, I didn't think it would be like a gen pop situation. Granted, again, hill I would die on. It was not her fault. I will never say it was her fault. But with the crime that she was charged with, um, I didn't feel like she would be in gen pop. And like when we see other people talk about since, like their time in prisons where they had access to do things like guys have barbers in their prison. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would assume hopefully that women have something similar in theirs. I've never heard a woman speak about it, but I would hope they would have something, a hairstylist or something to do their hair in prisons. So like, if she was in like isolation, if she was by herself, if she was never allowed to be around anyone, she could not have anyone do her hair. And it is easier in my opinion to it was easier for me to ever do my hair when it was natural. Like if I didn't have the things to do it, but when it's straight and, and after a couple of days of me not doing anything to it, it's dry, it's brittle. And I, it showed on my straight hair more that I haven't taken care of it than it ever did on my natural hair. If that makes sense from like, from a, yes, but I get the water on my natural hair and make it look shiny for a moment. The water on my relaxed hair is like a stringy mess. <laughs> yeah. But so I took it as her hair was straight and then it was she didn't go back to get it straightened again. So that's why it's natural. But when I look at just and this is just kind of me taking it in a in a real world context, right, where a lot of black women wear their hair straightened because they were told it's more professional. They were told the natural hair is not professional. And so when she loses her job, she's her hair is natural as if there's this relationship between her hair and her job. You know what I mean? Like her career when it was going up the ladder she had it straight she, she fit the little you know the definition of what professional hairstyle would be but the moment that that was gone she was like oh, all right well I guess I don't care as much anymore you know what I mean like <laughs> I don't have to fit the mold I, to make sure I get this this uh promotion you know so well also remember when she joined Discovery because this is her first time on Discovery before that she was on Shinju but when she joined Discovery and Tilly she was highly depressed she was in a really dark place. Tilly was really peppy and she was on a complete opposite end of that stretch. She didn't want to talk to anybody. She was like, she wanted to stay in this room. It wasn't until 
Lorca, who had other motives, um, brought her out that um, she was considering how else she could be useful, but she was really torn um, and not sure about how where she fit. Um, she also felt as though she let Sarek and Amanda down. There was a, a big weight. She she knew she was reflecting upon how many people died in the Battle of the Binary Stars and her parents' death um, from the Klingons. So there was just, a, I think, a lot going on with her at that during this scene. Um, this scene in particular, but she started with her hair natural the moment that they put her in jail. We don't know that for sure we see her six months after she's in jail right okay that's fair okay well i guess time matters so um ah! also there's <laughs> that about this book <laughs> right so yeah, tilly was very peppy she was very serious still like why am i here why am i with tilly <laughs> um, this is really when uh Lorca steps up and gives michael a little bit more of a role and like they're on like a training mission. So like um and I have to I have to agree with Janae that like the moment she's like back working, her hairstyle does change a bit because it does look like in this photo it's combed out a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's almost styled back to how it was when it was straight. So even though in the last photo it was like, look, I'm in jail. What you want me to do? Like this is yep. like, <laughs> I, I, I can only do work with what I got. And what I got is water. So water's gonna make this thing live or whatever. <laughs> And then it is like, okay, she's on a mission. And you would think her hair would just stay the way it was because you're going on a mission. Why does your hair need, need to be presentable when you could get attacked? And it does look almost like the tapered pixie again, but it's uh, Afro. It's like a combed out tapered pixie. Mm -hmm. She make it work. She decided <laughs> to, yeah. I have a comb now. She's mm -hmm. like, I have to a comb and a brush <laughs> and some styling mousse. <laughs> I do want to mention the structured part um and then like the comb over and that's similar to tilly style so i'm not sure if the stylist had that in mind that they're kind of mirroring each other but in slightly different ways of implementation but um oh, i have tilly's look right now i have this yeah. side part and then it's like back in a bun and it's a bun back here <laughs> <laughs> yes and so a uh, closer look at her her hair at this point so do you think Sonequa Martin Green is wearing a wig? Yep. That th those curls are laying a little too flat and perfect for that to be her natural hair. I really think if it's not a full wig, it's a partial because the sides are definitely a wig. Um, and then the edge, you can see the edges, that part that leans to her her ears, those side edges. That's that. That's a wig. It's it looks a like they tried to cut it to lay it down. So instead of doing baby hairs, they would just lay the hair so that it will cover up the actual like wig line i do i think it was a partial wig i um picked this picture which includes um michael and Sarek um embracing each other in season two episode seven light and shadows because it's a cross between the vulcan look that she had before but with more of the natural texture and you can definitely tell that Every strand was not molded down like mm -hmm. in a Vulcan with like if you had straight hair that could lie flat with mousse. Get a better wig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Which takes me to the worst wig, in my opinion, of them all. Yep. And that's from season one, episode 15, where it's like a natural mohawk, mo mohawk at the top. And then the sides are down and it's so dry to me. Yep. This entire look is awful because the, it, that mohawk is not mohawking. It's coming off too much on the sides. This look was not picked out. I'm so mad she didn't fight this look. If I was this, I would have like cut off a side of the mohawk. Because like a mohawk does not basically leave your eyebrow. <laughs> it's a mohawk does not go further out on your eyebrows than your eyebrows do on your face because it's literally just the center of your head. And if it goes over your eyebrows, like hers do it's no longer the center. It's taking over more. It's just the center of your head. Her hair is looking like she's not embracing her race. It's looking like she's embracing convenience, convenience. Mm -hmm. and what's go along to get along and then what's the what's, what does not stand out the most. And that hairstyle stands out in the worst way. This is also the season one for finale 
where she earns an award from the Federation, basically restoring her career after the mutiny. Like of all day to condition, to deep condition, <laughs> to make sure your hair is right, right? It's when you're up for a presentation, when you're up for a promotion, when you're getting an award, your job interview. Like this is this needs to be on point. And it's not, it's a complete miss. It, I, I it's different say- if she was like in the desert for for six months. <laughs> so the, the time that she honest. decides to wear her natural for her career is the time that they didn't do the best natural hairstyle for her. <laughs> and let's be honest, th- her hairstyle fresh out of jail was better than this hairstyle. Yes. yes. And that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. How How is it when you have access to products, this is what it comes out, but you fresh out the joint, your curls are popping? And then it's also really interesting because we're, we always see different te- textures for her hair. And it's not to say, because I, I, I know people who thought they had one type of hair and then they actually learned how to do it and it's like oh no my hair is not this type it's actually this type and I understand Mm -hmm. that you can learn how to do your hair to make it um to actually understand what it is um again I did not do that I just relaxed it because I'm lazy um (laughs) (laughs) but I feel like coming fresh out of jail and having curls better popping than this does not make sense to me like who on hair and makeup was like all right we're gonna get you the fresh look right out of like this the freshest cut your curls are gonna be popping and you're coming out the joint you're accepting the award all right this dusty mohawk <laughs> and shaved sides this mohawk that don't look like you have like you haven't put, you didn't even put water on that to make it to make the curls spring a bit it was just dry <laughs> it looks like it's a twist out that's like five days old that's what it looks like you know how you know you keep separating it, you keep separating and you lose the curl definition. That that's what it looks like. At least at the top. The sides just look like maybe they tried to brush it down and paste it so it will stay down. Cause they couldn't actually shave her sides because it's a wig. They're right. like, well, we get as close as possible by like making it flattish, flat ish. Because me, the, the sides look like it has the wrong gel. Like she used the wrong gel and didn't like set under the dryer. Didn't let it set like something <laughs> too. <laughs> they brushed it. They brushed it down. Yeah, and then to look at the back, there's no definition there. Even further into the future, she's exploring more hairstyles while she's um, with book and their and careers and um transporting and 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 raising funds getting her own ship it's giving what it needs to be giving for a woman mm-hmm. who's been on her own but actually has a little access it mm-hmm. is this was one of my favorite styles for her even though it wasn't the best style okay monique i see you you have something similar <laughs> go ahead pop those curls up um it's giving what it needs to give is it her best look? No, but it is a good look. This one looks like it looks like a natural style that people would actually wear, and it, maybe they, it was a twist out, maybe it was a braid out. Like they actually put some effort into caring for their hair. Um, I actually like this one. I like this style. I don't know if it's her hair, but it looks to me it does look it looks good. I agree. Maybe she decided to embrace the natural textures and and do more with it while she had time in the future waiting on everyone to catch up. I don't know, but yeah, it works. It also, for me, shows a level of freedom. It's an awkward moment when you go from the big chop to, okay, let me see if I can get some length to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of length, um, also in that episode, because it's the scene with her um, uh, evolving hairstyles is really showing how uh, Michael has grown over time, over that year. Her hair has grown a lot in that Mm -hmm. year while waiting for discovery. And so she has much longer length now for her natural hair. I love this style. It is, I wonder if this is her real hair or not, because like it was everything. It it reminded me the most of her hair when she was younger. Um, But like for adult version, like this one, she is killing it. I love this look and I love yeah. her in it. This is probably the favorite look for me personally because it, it does look the it looks now I got a question. I don't understand how she went from a taper to all her hair being the exact same length, but you know I trimmed it. Yeah, she had it with what? this morning. She, she trimmed that with what? 
Hey, well, now she's a courier, so she travels more. She's not even restricted to replicators or... Okay. She could stop by a salon and get her do refresh. <laughs> or have... At this point, she knows Booker, so, like, he might be helping her. He yeah. might have, like, you know, let me just comb you out because, you know, I love you, babe. <sighs> In the year, baby. though? I mean, I know everyone's hair rate grow. Everyone's hair goes at different rates, but that's a lot of hair on the sides and the back for one year, and then it catches up with the top. And my, like when I did that, when I had when I had like that swooping look, but when my when the back and sides of my hair were growing back out, I just kept cutting the front, so the front never actually got longer. It just looked like it was it all it was always longer until the rest of my hair cut up caught up. And after a year, like I cut my hair, I cut all my hair off. I've cut it where I had to, you know, the shave side and let the top, blah blah blah, all of that. But over a year, the length of the top of her hair was, and you consider it on average six inches. And her hair is is shrunken now because it's curled. So if you stretch that out, it's gonna be a lot longer than six inches on the side and back. I'm sorry, but in 3188, I'm sure there's protein super fast <laughs> to grow like super fast like, to grow hair to any lift that you want I mean you're right so my I, the only thing I did not like about this hairstyle as like the, the year kept going was it was so obvious that this was a wig mm -hmm. I could not get behind because like otherwise that style is laid it mm -hmm. is amazing um if this was her actual braids if like she had someone sit there and like braid in the hair I would have definitely believed this, but because it feels too much like a, like I can tell this is a wig, and it's mm -hmm. I hate cornrow wigs because they never look right. Like, it's not even hiding that it's not a wig, and I just. But, but I mean, we could talk about the fact that they actually doing extensions in thirty one eighty eight. I mean, that's pretty cool with the hair color. I mean, she got the streaks in there with the highlights and all of that. <laughs> that's I mean, I guess with that replicator, they can replicate <laughs> anything. Also, this is giving me more individuality, completely different than her Vulcan ways uh, growing up. I think that this shows more attitude with the smoky eye, yes. with the hairstyle. And that's why later several people, including Tilly, said, oh, you've grown. You're different. <laughs> Tilly and Michael's relationship has slightly grown apart over that year. So there's another scene, um, and this has occurred several times in the series, in which we see a version of Michael from the Mirror Universe, so Terry and Michael, in which there's a, uh, a tapered look, natural hair, uh, parted, <laughs> and, and cascading over to one side. So... I, honestly, I, I feel that this style is the style she should have had when she was being promoted and put back on the Discovery. Um, when she's being reinstated. This, to me, the presentation gives you more of what I think they should have been going for then. You know, even the baby, the edges look better to me. Like, in this this wig, if this is a wig, I think it's a wig. It looks better. It does. It, it looks better. Um, I definitely believe that this hairstyle was one of her better looks. Um, and the fact that it was the same season as we got that dry, that dry ass <laughs> mohawk fake thing, um, a faux hawk, whatever that was trying to be, is almost like a slap in the face because this was giving best of both worlds. It was giving professional, but also her natural hair. It was giving the short tapered pixie, but with curliness. Her, mm -hmm. This is one of her best looks. For, this is fresh out of jail, Michael. This is, I'm only here to so I don't get sent back to the prison, Michael. This is, I'm going to do my job um, when she's working with Lorca on the Discovery before she even gets her freedom, Michael. We don't get this amazing hairstyle when she's back on the Discovery. Exactly. Like, <laughs> what's going on? That was like almost a slap in the face. Like, really? Y'all just don't like black hair, do y'all? Because it was <laughs> perfect. And then you destroyed it. Well, I noticed that the edges here are just much better for yep. either for this wig or just Sonequa Martin Green's hair. The edges in the front are much better. And then I think it's a partial wig because it tapers a bit and then it's Sonequa Martin Green hair at the nape, around the nape of the net. So it's, it, I think the wig ends right below her ears. But um, only because I've looked in detail at these pictures. But um, it's much more moisturized. It seems like it has, it has 
a structured look, but it's not too, it's still stylish. Mm -hmm. It's still, it looks futuristic. It just, it looks kept up. The other look with that moho, that looked unkept to me. That looked like I lost my oil and I never replaced it. To Ever. You. The color was changing it. Okay. So then we also have Michael with the braided wigs. We've seen these with the, the we long We get rid braids. of the braided wigs. I got nothing to add for this. It's just looking <laughs> <horrible. laughs> <laughs> But Thanks. notice how long the braids are. Um, and it's a different type of braid, not different type, but it's a different braided wig than what we saw when she was a courier. And that wig was better than this wig. And that's it. It's like whenever she's with Starfleet, her hair is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she goes back to almost conforming as much as she can and she loses her creativity. In front yes, because she doesn't hair. have the color in this wig. It's just plain black. I would prefer her to keep that other wig the entire time than this one. But her scalp, you can see the scalp a little bit on this one, like the, the scalp in between, the, the parts in between the braids. You couldn't but really see that is, on the other one. Her scalp is a different color. It's more <laughs> red. And our scalps are always lighter than our face. True. And True. that's not lighter. That's just a different color. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for maybe one more hair look. Oh, God. Okay, not for me, this, this is the worst. This <laughs> well, one. No, the look was the worst. This is the second worst for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> From the season three finale. Okay, if you're listening to this on Spotify, you have to find the YouTube, okay? <laughs> because the the wig from the season three finale, they didn't even try. They just threw some, they glued some hair together to look like some braids and yep. stuck that on her head. Because I don't know what that is, but that is horrible. Yep. Yeah, I like a basket so weed. bad for Sonequa Martin Green. I don't understand why they let her leave the chair. Like, no, like the back chair where they were doing her hair and her makeup. Why they let her leave? Like, they, she, they should have just waited the four time if, and applied some other options to her hair because that wasn't working. And I know it's especially more difficult for her because she was pregnant at that time. She's visibly pregnant. And I'm sure she wanted to just wrap up the third season. But come on, let's do it with a little bit more class and style than this. <laughs> Go back to the short curly bob. Why are we dying on the hill of braids? Yeah. And the shorter braids, the, the it's just, it, the wig itself was just not there. It was just not, the you're absolutely right. Not, yeah. Well, they did give her a natural hairstyle as she promoted. So, I mean, that's cool. Sure. It's a protective <laughs> style. <laughs> okay, I'm going to transition on. Like, and then uh, in season four, she transitioned to visual braids and she wore those in different styles throughout the season. Uh, sometimes just the very top was pulled back. Uh, sometimes it was like several strands were twisted back around. This was probably her most realistic look. Um, if she wasn't going to have her hair out, I would prefer this look. And th this look only if her hair is not out. Like, don't go back to those cornrows. <laughs> Even if this is a wig, it's working so much better. Yeah, the only thing is that I can still tell it's a wig because the, the her hairline is so perfect mm -hmm. across the front. So like they could have done something with that to make it look a little bit more natural. But I do like for one, you get the vers whatever wig this is, it works because she has some versatility versatility with the style. Um and it still looks pretty authentic, you know, with it being a single braids. Well, this is the end of the Michael's hair journey. Wrap up with what were what was your favorite style? Which style would you like to see again? I would like to see when she was the uh her Taryn self, that hairstyle. Bring back that hairstyle. Where she had her hair in a natural kind of loose style where she was a courier. I think that I would like to see that one again. You know, like the twist out braid out look. I thought that was really cute. Good. I really like that Taryn style. I feel like that is edgy like Michael. Well, thank you guys. Um, for anyone who is listening, let us know in the comments or uh, on one of our Instagram posts or anything about what style did you like about Michael's? Which ones were your worst? Which one did you hate? Which one should be burned and never seen again? Because <laughs> let's be honest, we all as Black women have photos of hair that will never see the light of day ever again. So which one of those of Michael's should that be? <laughs> 
Um, but thank you, Janae, for co-hosting this episode with me, Monica. It was amazing. And you are amazing as always. Oh, well, thank you. Anytime. And as always, I'm Andrea. I'm Monica. And live long, long and prosper. And prosper. <laughs>